I cannot overstate how many people I have seen going into college including me and having a budget of 30000 rupees for their first laptop. 30000 rupees pretty cheap for a laptop right? Well, cheap doesn't always mean value for money. The laptops available under or in this range are what in my opinion pure e-waste. Slow processors, slow storage, low RAM and absolutely terrible displays. However, it's 2022 and there seems to be a disruptor in the market. This is the Infinix X1 and at under 30,000 rupees, I don't think there is a single laptop that comes even close to the amount of value that this brings to the table. But being a new brand in the PC space, is the Infinix X1 too good to be true? Let's find out. So this is going to be the most in-depth review of the Infinix X1 on YouTube. So stick around till the end. Alright, let's start with the build. So I've got the green model here and I gotta say, I love the color. It is matte and it's not too flashy. And regarding the build quality, it is great. All metal, very solid with the hinge that feels very smooth with the perfect amount of resistance. It is also pretty slim and weighs under 1.5 kg, making it very portable. It's kind of unbelievable how much better the build is compared to other laptops in this range. Going with the build, I want to talk about the port situation with this laptop, which is just great. On the left, it has an HDMI 1.4 port. USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port, USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-C port that supports power delivery and this laptop is actually charged with a 65W Type-C PD charger. There is another Type-C port that supports DisplayPort which means this laptop under 30,000 rupees can connect to two external displays which even many gaming laptops cannot do. And then there is a privacy switch to physically disable the webcam and mic. On the right hand there is another USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port a 2.0 Type-A port, 3.5mm audio combo jack and a micro SD card slot. So the I.O. situation is just perfect. So this is how the Infinix X1 web camera looks like and this is how the microphone sounds like. The fan is spinning just over here at almost full speed. So let me know how is the microphone catching my audio, is there too much noise reduction, is my voice tinny? So do let me know and uh, overall uh, the webcam quality looks just uh, you know average um, it, it's 720p it's not 1080p obviously for the price but overall the noise and all seems actually a little bit better than some of the gaming laptops that I've seen so overall at this price I have no complaints before coming to the best aspect of the laptop let's talk about the keyboard another pleasant surprise here the keyboard features a two-staged backlight control and overall the keyboard feels good to type on not much travel here but there is good feedback. The layout is standard and the keys themselves are large enough and very well spaced. The touch pad is large but I don't like the textured surface which feels kind of rough. Alright with that out of the way, let's get to the best aspect of the laptop and that's the display. A 14 inch, 300 nits, 100% sRGB IPS panel. The display is miles better than any other laptop display in this price range and can only be matched by the Realme Book which is quite a bit more expensive. Watching movies or consuming any type of content on this panel is just pure joy. Contrast is decent, not much backlight bleed and the colors look great. It actually matches my LG Ultra Gear monitor very closely. In my opinion, the display itself is the reason to consider this laptop in this range. Along with the display, the speakers are quite good too. You need to keep DTS audio on to get the best result. The speakers are very loud but the sound is best at about 70-80% volume. They have good mids and highs but unfortunately no lows. Alright, let's talk about performance. So this model comes with an Intel Core i3 1005G1 which features 2 cores and 4 threads with a boost clock of 3.4 GHz all core and a TDP of 15 watts. It's paired with a dual channel 8GB LPDDR4X RAM running at 31MHz and the RAM is soldered and cannot be expanded. Here are some benchmark numbers from Cinebench and Geekbench which mean absolutely nothing for a laptop like this. So let me show you some real world application performance starting with web browsing. So the laptop is perfectly fine for web browsing guys. Here I'm using the Edge browser which is basically based on Chromium 
and I'm opening multiple YouTube tabs, playing 1080p 60fps videos and some other sites. And the laptop is handling it well. There is a slight hiccup when you push it to the extreme as the four threads of the CPU get overwhelmed and the RAM starts to become the bottleneck. But overall, the web browsing, this is completely fine. Now while keeping the browser open, let's try opening some large-ish Excel spreadsheets and apply some formulas and let's see if the system bogs down. I'm trying to simulate a real-world work scenario over here. And the little i3 does pretty well. Going back to the browser, there is the tiniest bit of lag as the dual-core CPU tries to handle all these tasks back and forth. But again, in my opinion, it is acceptable. Okay, now let's move on to Lightroom. The laptop has a color-accurate sRGB panel. So some people may use it for editing photos. So here I'm using Lightroom to edit some 24 megapixel raw photos from the Sony a7 III mirrorless camera. We'll apply some masking and see how quickly the CPU processes the Lightroom masks and shows the preview. And I mean, it's doing pretty well here. Again, the single core performance is decent enough to handle such operations. The main limitation that I'm seeing here is again the RAM, which I said earlier is soldered on and cannot be expanded. Let's apply the same settings on all the images and try to export them. Next up, let's move on to video editing. Now, I'm using a basic editor over here that is Wondershare's Filmora. And I'll just tell you straight away, you can do some light video editing with 1080p 30fps clips. But here I tried some 100mbps. 8-bit 4K H.264 clips from the Sony A7R2. Now, this is nothing special, guys, but the laptop expectedly struggles. It just doesn't have the CPU or the GPU horsepower to process these clips. As you can see here, even the preview is not perfect. Applying some basic color grading makes the preview super choppy and absolutely eats up all the RAM. So I just put together this timeline and when I'm trying to export it, it just crashes mainly due to the RAM getting overloaded. So you can do some light video editing with some 1080p 30fps clips as long as the RAM is not overloaded. Alright, now let's talk about gaming. I don't know why I'm talking about gaming on a 15 watt TDP dual core i3 with Intel HD graphics, but trust me, I have seen a lot of people asking about GTA 5 gaming performance on this laptop for some reason. Okay, so let's start with GTA 5. So we are running GTA 5 at 720p, lowest settings, and I mean, just look for yourself, man. I won't recommend playing GTA 5 on this laptop. The temperatures and all that are fine, but the dual core 15 watt CPU just cannot handle the GTA 5 engine, which is quite CPU intensive. GTA San Andreas, on the other hand, at max settings 1080p without anti-aliasing applied is playable though. So you can play this old but great games just fine. Moving on, we have Genshin Impact at 720p, mostly low settings, and it's just barely playable, about 35 FPS on average. Again, going a decade back to 2010's NFS Hot Pursuit, one of my favorite NFS games of all times. And at max settings 1080p, it's quite playable. I would have no issues playing this game at this frame rate. So overall, this is no gaming laptop, but it can play some games from a decade ago. Now, before moving on to the cons, let's talk about battery life, which I found to be pretty good. At about half brightness, browsing the web and doing some office tasks, you can expect about seven to eight hours of battery life out of the 54 watt hour battery. And even more if you use battery saver mode. Charging is fast with a 65 watt PD type C charger, and I did not face any issue with earthing.
all right now for the cons and this is a big one i mean a massive one for me so the laptop has a very weird issue with the wi-fi performance if you are away from the router with one or two walls in between the wi-fi download speeds drop drastically i don't know why this is happening if it's infinix to be blamed or the intel ac9461 wi-fi 6 network adapter but as you can see here this is a massive deal breaker for me and maybe to you as well if anybody has an intel ac9461 network adapter in your laptop and is facing the same issue please comment down below next up is windows 11 my god i find windows 11 to be so counterintuitive with oversimplification of menus with too many clicks required to reach the desired option i just don't want to talk about it here windows 11 is also known to degrade battery life so i don't know maybe battery life could have been better if this laptop came with windows 10 so windows 11 has a long way to go to be optimized as well as windows 10. speaking of windows 10 i could have installed windows 10 however infinix does not have any drivers listed for this laptop in their support page this is unacceptable infinix if you are watching this please provide drivers for this laptop that can be manually downloaded and lastly, I want to talk about the after sales support, which is an obvious question for any new brand. Now, in my case, I have a service center for Infinix in my city and they do provide on-site support. But before buying, definitely check for support in your city. All right, guys, that was my review of the Infinix X1. I am mighty impressed with this laptop, except for that huge network issue that I'm still trying to solve. At 30,000 rupees, I mean, there is just no competition for this laptop. It's head and shoulders above any other laptop in this range. So yeah, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. This video took a long time to make. So do like and please subscribe to the channel. All right, take care and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.